Warning, this podcast contains spoilers. And a lot of creepy shit. And other inappropriate stuff. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Yassin on TV podcast for American Horror Story Season 6, Episode 3, titled Chapter 3. Real original, guys. I'm your host, Mike, and joining me is Nikki. Yes, and I would like to say that the reason why they've done the chapters is because they wanted to keep us in the dark for evers and evers. Pretty much. And then they're like, boom, here's the episode. This is what it's about. So also, they're not going to... They're not going to rename things after they've done that. No, they're not. Also joining us is Jake. Sorry. Hello, everyone. What? Priscilla says hi. Hi. <laughs> oh. I forgot about that. <laughs> also joining us is Rachel. Hi. Hi. <sighs> Cuba, go- okay. Before we start, huh? I want to point out that Chicklet was on the Witch Council in Season 3 Coven. He was. Yes, he was. Fancy fabulous. He was drunk too. Chicklet. I thought his name was Cricket. I know. Cricket. It is, it is Cricket, but I'm calling him Chicklet because he's so fabulous. Okay. He's, yeah. And he's tiny. He's <laughs> tiny. <laughs> he is. So he's I, never, I never thought, you know, uh, the, these words would come out of my mouth, but Sarah Paulson goes for a stroll in the woods and comes across Cuba Gooding Jr. fucking Lady Gaga. Discuss. Was that Lady Gaga? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> this just in. She, I think she is the root of all this. I think she is, there's something, mm. she is the root of the evil that is it. She's, like, all these good, she's, she's like the a one, goddess or something. Yeah, she's the yeah. one that, that saved what's her, uh, yeah, how she fakes character. Yeah. She's, um, she's the yeah. one that kind of contracted Thomason. her. So, yeah. a thing. Thomas and White. Thomas and White, yes, who, um, I don't know if she was really the wife of John White in, like, reality, but, you know. No, it's connecting it. Works for our story here. Connects it, grounds it to reality. And, um, the re- a review I read today said that she is a wood nymph. Hmm. Mm. Uh, I eh. have no... Not quite a goddess, but... No, I don't know. She's I don't a little think... more demonic than that. Uh, yeah, I don't think she's just a wood nymph. Because they are there to cause, uh, like, mischievous acts, shenanigans. They're not there to contract evil. She's one of That's them angry did. ones. Yeah, she, I, I mean, nerdic. clearly she's like, get, she told them, uh, told her, you know, give me your soul here, your mm-hmm. heart, basically, and I'll set you, I'll let you go. I mean, it would explain the whole you know, mind controlling a guy to bang her in the forest and then making him forget about it. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, that is the mischievous part, yes, but even a demon would do that just to mm-hmm. piss off his wife. Mm-hmm. So. And and that's another thing. Couldn't she tell by looking at him? He had no freaking clue what he's doing. He had that glazed over look in his eye. And Shelby, he had... Haven't we discussed this in episode one? Shelby's a moron. She's, a, she's fucking stupid. Okay, she gives. Okay, she gives blondes a bad name, and blondes already are terrible when it comes to flakiness and just being, uh. It's like, oh, I hate it. The stereotype is just. Mm-hmm. I hate her. So we're still well. We were in the dark at the beginning of this episode where Flora disappeared to. Um, big. I had an idea. Yeah, I kind of got an idea. No. Well, I, I, I did say it last. I think I think Priscilla's protecting her, and so it seems. We think, well, and Cricket seems to think that she's trying to protect. She's trying to keep her as a friend. I think reality. I think she's trying to protect her. I think it's both. I think because, it's probably both because she is a child, and yeah. they can relate easy. That makes like bonding easier. And then the whole protection part is that she did take her off the land so that the butcher couldn't get to her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. And as the butcher, you know, the butcher said to Cricket in their second little contact there, you know, Priscilla is beyond the bounds of my colony and, like, out of my influence. Because if yeah. we had her, she would be already, you know. She'd it's like, if I had that girl, her. she'd have been, you know, as she said, cut and stewed and fried or whatever. Yeah, she would have been already dinner. Mm-hmm. But instead, they did that to her dad. 
Surprise. Whatever. <laughs> it's bad that I'm... I feel bad for saying this, but I'm not going to miss Mason. I'm not, because no. he did some... Pulled some shit this episode, and I wasn't happy about it. We will get to that later. Okay. If you want to get to that now, because he's Okay, fine, dead. we will get to that now. He is dead. <laughs> okay. So, Flora has been missing for 72 hours. More than 72 hours. So, they don't know if she's alive or not. She's beyond missing. And then, so, Mason, you know, he comes to look for her, too. So, he's at the house. Everybody's at the house. They're all quiet. They're tired. You know, they haven't... They've had no luck. And then Mason just goes off on Lee. He's like, you know, what shit are you pulling? Where did you hide her? Really, bitch? Like, seriously? Like, she's like, going to pull this for how many this days? Is a, you think this is a scheme? You think this I... is a scheme? Everyone's freaking out, and they, your, your fucking daughter is missing. I know. <laughs> now, here's the question. The great question. Um... Do we really think that Lee killed Mason? No. 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 Mm. No. The same shit happened with Lee as it happened with Matt. Is that his name? Yeah. Matt. Matt. Yeah. Um, they don't remember. She doesn't remember. She thinks she was sleeping the whole time. It's like, like very. It's like the Blair Witch. They did stuff and they don't remember it, but until they found the video of them doing all this crap, and they're like, we don't remember doing that. I thought most of the people got killed on the Blair Witch. Uh, I think Blair Witch did. 2. Spoiler. Oh. This, I didn't watch it. Blair Witch 2 was horrible, but they did. They had, like, some kind of orgy-type party thing, and they didn't know. When people got killed. They didn't know how people could die. They didn't know, and then they found the videos of them doing this shit, and they don't remember doing it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, one quick mention. Okay, so Mason's dead. You know, rest in peace, Mason. There's some video footage of... Or in pieces. Yeah. There's some video footage of Lee leaving the house shortly after him and then coming back alone around the time they discover the body. Four hours later. Yeah, so there's some of that. And I want to talk about the fact that they found two hillbilly kids suckling on a sow in an abandoned yeah. farm. We didn't, when I first heard it, I didn't know what the kids were screaming. I didn't hear it either. I didn't, and then, like, I had and to then, go back. Yeah, but then when when Cricket said it, and I was like, oh, so that's what the kids were saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it didn't, like, when they, when the kids said it, I didn't hear Croto. Mm -hmm. and, and then, um, when Shelby's like, oh, there, that's what they were saying, I went back, and I was like, oh, yeah, they did say that. Yeah. It was really, really hard the first time. See, it was really hard to understand them. Yeah, and that's the, I watched it on, uh, FX's website on, with subtitles on, and when they're, like, mumbling in the barn, they're, you know, the subtitles say they're mumbling Flora. Because that's what I figured. Okay, they were screaming for us, so they're, they're mocking them. They can't Not talk. Mocking. They well, no. they they haven't really developed their ability to speak yet. They can only like repeat certain words they make... that they say. I but they I bet they probably don't even know what they mean. I think yeah, they're that, just repeating. They're they're, mo they're like mockingbirds. They're probably double triple inbred. So I mean double triple. Double the chances of them having functioning vocal cords is a double miracle. triple inbred. Well. You've seen the their hillbillies. mom is not only their mom but their grandma and their aunt. I forgot to okay, I forgot to mention and their my, sister. In my opening statement, you know, Cuba Gooding Jr. fucking Lady Gaga on the forest while two hillbillies watch and jerk off. Because yeah, that's I what know. was going on. <laughs> Those growls. But anyway. Uh, but that, that's the kind well, of hillbillies we're dealing they, with here. The the hill they're they're gone. They're just yeah. gone. I'm guessing that was their house that we saw. Yeah, and um, they just left those two. Yeah, they're gone. I have a feeling that because it seems like the land of the Roanoke colony is like far spread, and that farm happened to be on part of it. And those typical hill, those those typical hill, those particular hillbillies had a deal with the Roanoke clan, and it had to do with the house. And since they didn't have the house in their possession, the deal was broke, and they got axed. Mm -hmm. I might have, yes. Seems like it. And the fuck, the, the cops there no more. That stupid sheriff. I want to punch him in the head and beat him till he tells us what. He Lee does. and Lee said Lee was a cop, mm -hmm. and she knows that there. She knows shady shit's going around. She knows that those cops are in cahoots with. Or they uh, know something. People. Shit's yeah. going down. Yep. Um. So now I want to talk a little bit about cricket. Now, 
I know the actor was in Coven. Now, was it the character as well who was on no. the Witch Council? Because no. No. the character Cricket is a medium from New Orleans. Mm-hmm. So that's why it kind of hit me like, is it the same character? But No. Okay. So anyway, called to the house by the spirits. He did. Yeah. I mean, he's obviously the real deal. Yeah. Yeah, until, until he asked for money. I would have hit him too. I loved him when he stepped into that house. Um, and I was like, oh my god, this guy's cool. And he's like, mm-hmm. and I, I believed him like the second he stepped into the room that he was a he... psychic. He looks like a psychic. I'm like, oh my god, you're amazing. I want you to stay forever. Then he said $25,000. I'm like, oh, fuck you. Exactly. What? When, Screw you, dude. When he walked in and he was just the way he was presenting himself, the way he phrased the, when, when he was talking and everything, it reminded me of the lady from the poltergeist yes, and I, I fell in love with him mm-hmm. instantly. That is the, like, I'm like waiting yes. for the this house is clear. <laughs> it's I don't never know, gonna be clear. Them? I don't know if no. she charged them or no. not. I don't think she did. She was, she was sassy as all hell though. I love her. In the movie Poltergeist, she was part of the uh, research team that was yeah. investigating the house, so she was working mm-hmm. with, the, with the team. So, but so, she was sappy as well. Huh? I mean, this she guy just great. walks into the house like, maybe you should lock your doors. Like, oh, that's not gonna help. That's okay. not gonna help. Not right now. But um, they trust him after a very, very quick Google search reveals that yes, he does help find lost kids. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, well, he's connected not, to the I'm, FBI, so... Yeah, it's yeah, not sure. necessarily if, whether or not he's a fake and they don't trust him. It's the fact that all of a sudden, they, he gets them to a point, and then he's like, I need money. Yeah. Well, to be fair, the butcher cut been a candle front. in half, and then all the windows exploded, and he's like, okay, this is just too risky for me. I need collateral damage from your wallet. I need insurance. Well, he's- I mean, he is, he does this a lot. He is kind of risking his life every day, so. Um, I mean, he I mean, just. He's dealing, he's dealing with. So, I mean, he the is. the right time to be asking for it. Saying know, that but, you know where your daughter is. Oh, by the way, I need 25 grand. Well, you know, he, he probably needs the money, lookable, but still, he is, you know, working with a. He's calling a number that is not in my phone plan, so. Uh, if someone's got to do it, I'm glad it's him. <laughs> I like that. I like that analogy, because, yeah, that's. I mean. I got to contact Priscilla. No, instead you get a crazy lady with a cleaver. Well, I mean, he did mention like sprint and whatever in the very beginning of his speech and monologue or whatever when he walked in through the door. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, cleaves the candle in half, and then he screams her out of the room by screaming Croatoan over and Croatoan. over. Croatoan. Yeah. What the hell does that mean? Well, you know what? It did was the word. It yes, I know what it means. It's the word. When they came back to find the Roanoke colony, it the only thing they found besides like you know everything in shambles and you know whatever was the word Croatoan carved into a tree. They the assumed that, was... that this was the island they went to. And yes, it, uh, the theories were it's the island they went to. It was the name for a local native tribe that they like in- no, uh, melded with. The way that they explained it in season one, because there was Roanoke discussed in season one of American Horror Story was that Croatone was the word that the native tribes used to try and cleanse the area. Mm. Mm. And when um, oh, I'm sticking with that then. When, when What's Her Face tried to clear the house, um, she used the word Croatone and Zachary Quinto's character was like, oh, oh and he's like, ah, I got you. It's not gonna <laughs> fucking work. So I'm like, I'm sitting there, I'm like Croatone didn't work. I'm sitting here thinking Croatoan never worked on the Roanoke colony. Well, you guys are all screwed. <laughs> well, it kind of worked on Kathy Bates. Nah, she was probably just like, I'm done with this shit. Get out of here. I think it was more or less the holy shield he put up. Like, she's like, oh, I can't really do ha- damage to them. All I can do is hurt the house. The, I don't really care about the house. I was up the card. Not the card. card. Yeah. I'm- this is, he was chanting and it's like this whatever. is Saint what you know whoever the hell you know blah blah blah. Like he was that. a Saint of the Woods or something like that. Yeah, like protector yeah. of the woods and all the you know all who work the land and the stuff white, like that. The white light. The white light <laughs> shall protect us. I would have laughed if she just cut the card in half. Like the white light ain't gonna protect shit. <laughs> it's like it's like ah. Well, now we know that you know when Priscilla died, he should fifteen hundreds. Yeah. So Maybe she was, it was probably it was an original Roanoke. inhabitant. Yeah. No, yeah. Roanoke was the 1500s. It just seems like well, and she also called her the demon's seed. Mm. 
No, she that's was. What the called her. I thought yeah, she the, called her the bastard the, seed. The bastard seed. I have a theory about that. Uh, okay. Well, Please share. Just the way she talks about Priscilla and like she called her a bastard child. I'm guessing her husband was doing some things. That makes sense. Or someone's husband or wife was doing some things. Yeah. Yeah. But either but... way, Priscilla I have a feeling that... like I think Pris- Priscilla doesn't like her and Priscilla doesn't hang out around them. So. I have a feeling that Priscilla is a mixed race. Probably. It's oh, that's probable. You're right. She might be Indian and that. Yeah. Well, yeah. 1500s, any kind of mixed race wasn't nearly. That was a no-no. That was a yeah. no-no among you know, especially white people from England. Yeah. 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 So, we got some history on Thomas and um. White. White. Thank you. Oh my god, I almost said Thomas and Bates because Kathy Bates, and I'm like, no, that's wrong. No, <laughs> brain. Stop it. Stop it. Sorry, I love Kathy Bates. Um, she's great. Yeah, she's great. So yeah, this is what grounded it to you know reality, because John White, Thomas and White here. I'm going to actually Google her after this. I should have done that before the show. See if it's real. But, you know, he goes off for a supply run, which is mm-hmm. what really happened. Mm-hmm. And in the meantime... She's running the place. However, nobody doing likes a very good it. Job. Either she's not well, doing a very good job, or people don't like... There's only a couple of people that don't like I'm it. I'm guessing they don't yeah. like that she's being such a hard-ass. Or they don't that like that she's a woman. a woman. Probably that, She's too. a woman, she's a hard-ass, and she doesn't want to move, even though it probably would have been better in the long run, because they're trying to escape the winter, they don't have as many no, crops and She resort. wanted to move, they didn't. They wanted to stay, I think. No, no it was the other, other way around. around. She oh, no, wanted to right, stay just right. in case her husband came you're right, back. You're and right. then she wanted to go. Two, and then she's like, no, we're leaving. Yeah, that's like, right. I'm sorry. my idea. She was, you're right. She <laughs> wanted to stay, like, stay here so when he gets back, he knows where we are. And then you're right. She killed everybody and is like, yeah, we're moving inland anyway. Yeah. So that's what happened to the Roanoke colony. They just moved. Mm. After, that is, you know, she gets banished, almost gets attacked by a wild boar, and then Lady Gaga rips out its heart, and it's like, here it is, have some food, your soul is mine. She was probably starving, so... Yeah. Yeah. At that point, you're gonna eat anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If and plus, when this thing can, like, uh, take off your mask thing off your head. You know, and this... You, yeah, like, just take the cage off by snapping and your you're... fingers, really. Why not? They, like, I don't know how long they said she was, you know, out there, but she was probably... She yeah, yeah, you would still be really hungry by then. She probably wasn't even considering the whole well, selling your soul to the evil Lady Gaga deer thingy. She was probably just really hungry, and she's like, okay, we'll eat first and take the consequences later. To be fair, the colony was already starving when she went out there, when she mm-hmm. was forced out. So They're they're basically down to, like, cabbage soup. I yeah. Mean, uh, I think Watered down leaks. Cap- leeks they, or something like that, yeah. Yeah. They really weren't expecting, you know... And this was actual grounded in history. They weren't expecting the winter, the Virginia winter. Yeah. Because, no. you know, global temperatures then were, I think, what, two degrees colder on average or one degree cold or something. But, you know, the winters were reportedly a lot harsher back then. Yeah. So, well, especially from where they come from. Oh, uh, well, especially, bit. yeah, exactly. It's completely different. So winter sets in, everybody's going to freeze to death. And other stuff. Mm-hmm. And and Lee did bring up a point, you know, when she did go back and talk to Cricket, that if there's a, you know, a, um, a placard for it over 100 miles away, why would it be here? He goes, that's not, basically, you don't know the whole story. Mm-hmm. And now that you wouldn't know the yeah. whole story. No, there were no records. Now we do. Of it. And, you know, them migrating off of this, you know, going inland is a plausible thing. I mean... It's yeah, it's a plausible idea. I mean, I mean, picking up everything and going inland to get because because she knows that there's wild yeah. boars out there because that's where she mm-hmm. was at. She knows yeah, but, there's there's food, there's uh woods wood for to build shelters. So, Native tribes it, migrate all the time to mm-hmm. avoid weather problems, so it's it's not unheard of at all. No, yeah. but uh, the Roanoke, you know, like the whole legend about that, there were actually two disappearances. So what happened to the second one? Now, the first one, 
there was no trace of anything, no anybody, no supplies, mm-hmm. no nothing. The second one is the one where they found the word carved into the tree. So mm-hmm. I don't know if they're combining the two for this season. Uh, it but sounds it's, like they are real- kind of combining the yeah, two. But in reality, there. there were two. There were two different. Yeah. Hmm. Yes. There's two different. White should never have left, I guess. I don't know. Well, he kind of had to. I mean, yeah, he, he needed to get resources because they, yeah. they didn't have enough to survive the winter. They were dying. So he had to, yep. They're I mean, an experiment. The chances of him getting back before, you know, like getting to England for supplies and coming back, you know, before That's winter like three set months in. back then. That's three months both ways. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Chances are a lot of those resources that he would have been get, gathering would have been like I mean, realistically, mostly consumed or rotting. He was coming back, back to. They're... He was coming back to the start of spring and a bunch of thawing corpses. Like was what you know he should have expected. Um, That's a cool image. Mm. Anyway, we get a couple of little backgroundy things here on Lee, and this is. We actually get some story told through the documentary for once. Uh, Lee. And, yeah. you know, documentary Lee here, you know, they mentioned, you know, like, because when Cricket left the house, he whispered something to her. And then, you know, the interviewer is like, was it something to do with Emily? Like, uh, no. like, <laughs> how'd you, like, how'd you find out about that? Like, you know, anybody, everybody. We did out. research. We did research. <laughs> Simple background check. You know, all that stuff is public record. And it's like, turn those fucking cameras off. And She just need to compose herself. Mm-hmm. So apparently Emily was her four-year-old daughter who up and vanished when she took her eyes off her for a brief moment. No. <sighs> no. She, she left her in the car. She left yeah, her in the car. Left her left her car. Supermarket. Yeah. Which, in those times when she would have had her, it was not uncommon. Mm-hmm. Not uncommon to do that. It really we wasn't. did get in the car for two seconds. No way. No way. Oh, I know. We. Would, I would never have done it. But back my mom would. I. My mom would have never done it to me. My grandmother would have never done it to my mother. It, it's just like you know. I don't know. It seems like a common sense thing to me. Like, don't leave your child alone, ever. <laughs> there are sickos no matter when. It depends on where you live and how you're raised. I was left in the car. Because I was. I was left in the car alone. I was left in the car alone as early as age eight. Well, eight is different than four. Yeah. It could have been earlier, I don't remember. But yeah, eight is much different than four. Just running into the store to grab something real fast? Yeah, a lot of parents do that. Yeah, like, I I can understand the idea there, but... Poof. So... When I heard that, I was like, are you seriously... You are stupid! Well, she was only 17, too. No, she said she had her daughter when she was 17. Her daughter was four years old. Oh, so she was 21. But, still, but she's still, that's still really young. young. She does it. Yeah. So, midway... Whether or not she had her parents' support or not, it's a whole other story, too. So, midway through the second seance, um, like, you know, Cricket tells the butcher, look, you help us find the little girl, you know, deal with Priscilla... And get you know Flora back alive. Everybody, they all agree, they will leave Burn this the land. Like they will leave this land and make sure nobody comes back. And it's like, yeah, we're gonna burn this house down. And which Shelby's like, I never what? It's like I never agreed to that. Oh, Matt agreed to that. It's like you're voted off the island, bitch. We're burning the house down. <laughs> to which, well, you know, we I assume did that a couple times too to them. We uh, assume that a couple times to them. Right. Voted them off the island. We didn't get the rest of this conversation because c- it focused on Shelby after she ran off to find, oh, excuse me, find Matt after he disappeared. But I mean, we can assume that the butcher agreed. He did. Yeah, she did. Or she did. She did. Cricket came. Uh, Lee said that Cricket and her they figured it out. Mm-hmm. So the butcher then... agreed, which you know shows that she's not exactly nuts. She can be bargained with. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. there's more to this protecting the land sort of thing. There's something going on. There's something going on. Yeah. Um. And now, this is where Shelby runs off and finds Matt. You know, did, in the did, act, yeah, yeah. she shines the light on his face, and you can tell just by the look on his fucking face. 
that he was nowhere there. There's nobody at the wheel. No. Nope. Lights are on, you know. No one's home. Exactly. The hamsters have all died. <laughs> the, yeah, the hamsters are all died. Um, so she storms off. You know, he comes back to the house, and documentary Matt is saying, I don't remember any of this. Like, you know, I don't have a damn clue what happened. And, you know, gets back. Lee is being arrested because, you know, Shelby, Shelby released... called the cops and released the footage. Yeah. And, like, you know... I, don't have, I have no idea she, like, what you're talking about. No, no, no. About. Shelby, what are you doing? What's going on? Don't, don't you know, touch me, whatever. It's like, honey, I have no idea what you're talking about. It's like, what, what's going on with my sister? I have no idea what you're talking about. I just wanted to, like, strangle her stupid face right then and there. See, Sarah Paulson is an amazing actress. I know. But every character that ha- like she plays has this bit of sass, and I just want to punch her in the face, and that is why well, it's not the- I, I don't, don't really like respect. I used to like her sass. I like I sass, it's but it's not nice. the ha-ha See, kind of sass. Her, her character Shelby reminds me of the early 90s California granola women. Oh. Um, Oh boy. <laughs> uh, that's exactly what it is. Oh my god. I actually see a lot of, um, like, not. It's, it's similar to her character she played in Asylum near the end. Um, Lana Winters was really strong and sassy and just, like, sarcastic and just sharp at the very end. And I, I don't really like those kind of people. So when Shelby goes and does this and turns it around and it's like she's just really. Yeah, but... Lee didn't do anything. She didn't do Lee anything. was not the one doing the thing with Lady Gaga and Forrest. Leo. I know, but you know, but that's it's that's what kind of character Shelby is. She's a granola. Again. Co- well, I think the reason why Shelby took the 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 action against uh, Lee was because Lee's like, we're burning the house down, and then Shelby's like, what? Like, she was the first person to say that. Shelby, episode one, you would have burned that house down. Yeah, I, I, I don't know why she's so entranced with the house now. She sees all this shit going on. She's like, I don't want to leave. You know something? Even though I would, you know, if I saw all this shit going on, I still, being this person that I love history and I love architecture and seeing that house and watching it burn, I would cry. I would, well, I would try too. Cry. It's but I a mean, beautiful house. That it house is, really is nice house. gorgeous. I'd Can we just it. move it? It's How a about devil that? house. Why do we have to burn it up? Can we just move it? Like literally lift it up and. Move it. They can do that. They can do they... that. You can do it off. You can move it off the land. Use a chainsaw, you know. <laughs> See, you could move it off the land and it'd have, you know, it'd be free of Roanoke and all them people, but there's still a lot of angry spirits inside that house. Oh, yeah, That's yeah, when the, you do the, the cleansing murderers. of the house. It doesn't work. We, we watched season one, it doesn't work. Well, this isn't... <laughs> Burn this the isn't sage, fun. put up your white light shields, post pictures of the saints of every it's saint light. everywhere. <laughs> like, it depends on the ghost. Like, so. seriously, get a catalog the... of every saint canonized by the Catholic Church and paste them to every wall in the house, you know, burn some sage, scream crow a toe and type of ghost or haunting you're having and the type of people you come in to cleanse your house. <laughs> Have a because speaker system a repeating it every ten seconds. <laughs> I think it's the same type of haunting as in season one. Yeah, well, this is all a connected universe, so... Yes, it is. Um, oh, there are different... Uh, We've seen different uh, supernatural elements in this show. Mm-hmm. We've had, let's see, we've had ghosts, we've had witches. We've, we've had the devil. We've had, you know, the voodoo, you know, version of the devil. Yeah. A lot of different religions um, and their deities. Aliens. We've had aliens. Bring the aliens back. Please. Yes, I love aliens. I okay. I thought it was going to be aliens this season. So did I. I was, that was really one of my for theory. it. This still could be aliens this I season. I thought it was going to tie back to season two, because season two is my favorite. So I, I'm I was hoping for ties to that. I was really hoping for a village of the damned feel. Yeah. I could have gone with that, too. Well, now it's giving me a conjuring feel this season. Yes. Because my husband goes, wow, I this is. is very... Hills have eyes. <laughs> It's a combination of things. There's a bit of Hills Have Eyes going on, yeah. It is. It's oh, a yeah. combination yes. of all sorts of all these like horror movies. 
Yeah, well, I did make some comparisons to The Conjuring, specifically with this season. You know, creepy old farmhouse and all, but um, just some of those strange things that do happen. And, we, of course, we got a sidekick coming into the house. Sidekick, you know, going around saying, okay, there is this batshit crazy woman who lived in this house, and she's still living in this house. I don't think bat- she ever lived in the house. I think she was just Well, bat with you. Well, Bathsheba Sherman in The Conjuring mm-hmm. never really lived in the house, but she was attached to the house. Um, was it Sarah Paul? Yeah, Sarah Paulson played that medium in season mm-hmm. one. Uh-huh. And Billy, uh, Billy yes. and, and in a hotel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, in mm-hmm. hotel. Um, and they're thinking that she might come back in this one. But Sarah, has been Sarah Paulson's already... Hey, they and did it. Already. Yeah. Yeah. What the heck was that? Something going on. Something happened. Someone turned into a cyborg. Anyway, um. But no one was talking. Oh, it's Jacob. We lost Jacob. Oh, no. I was like, wait, no one was talking when that was done. Oh dear it's lord, delay. our podcast is our podcast is haunted. Well, while we <laughs> while we hope that Skype is gracious and sends him back to us, um. Priscilla, give Jake back. Please give Jake God back. Goddamn Priscilla of oh, fuck. Oh boy. Anyway, um What were we talking about before I got utterly distracted by robot voice? <laughs> I don't know. Really? I don't know either. The house oh, yeah. oh the psychic. Really? Yeah, but in hotel right. last season, um, Sarah Paulson played the junkie ghost with the teeth that fell out and everything, and the psychic. She played two played characters. Sally. Yeah. Billy. Oh, she- so, there's no issue with that happening again. I mean, they could get her like for the reenactment part. I don't, I don't see them putting her in, like, not the reenactment, the actual documentary part. Not the, they wouldn't put her in the reenactment. I don't no. think. But I think they, they might, would. they might have a, someone playing her in the reenactment and then talking to her and like they've been, how, like they've been doing. I wonder who's going to be playing her in the reenactment. That's fun. That would be really interesting. I hope somebody completely new. Completely different. Or they could get Little Miss Sassy. Um, Emma Roberts. Um, yes. Dom's future ex-girlfriend. Everyone is Dom's future ex-girlfriend, ex-wife, ex-husband, whatever. You notice they're all blondes, too? Dom has a type, guys. He has a type. And it's blonde. So, um, I think we've talked about everything in this show, right? Um. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all we can do is, like, speculate at this point. I mean, I mean, we did get a little bit of the background from, you know, the colony, which is which was really cool, which I really enjoyed the background a little bit. A little I always like the flashbacks. Like in season three when they do the flashbacks with um Kathy Bates characters where she's in you know, getting herself involved in voodoo and like immortality and stuff. That's really interesting. Mm-hmm. See what happens to her kids and her family and then the repercussions in modern day. That's really, really awesome. So all magic comes that, with the price. Ha <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, Don't say yeah. that might happen. <laughs> um. All right. Well, on that note, then I guess that's our show. I was hoping Jay could jump back in to do his outro jingle that I cannot even hope to remember or match. So, Nikki, where can they find you? They can find me on Twitter at Lady Venom Twenty Four L A D Y V E N O M Twenty Four. Rachel, where can they find you? Hey, goodbye, me at Twitter at Savannah Seventeen, and hopefully this week, cross my fingers, I'll be starting on the costume for my daughter's calling on That's Twitch me. at Savannah. I have the wedding dresses right there. Um, you sweet wedding dress. You can find Jake on Twitter at To Nowhere Land, and he has a really awesome jingle that I'm not going to attempt to butcher. Uh, you can also find him, I believe, YouTube at Jacob Salazar. Mm-hmm. There we go. Um, follow him at those places for more Jake kind of jingles and stuff. You can find... <laughs> yes? What? I see you doing this with your hand. 
No, um, I was doing the like, you know, follow, you know, hand gestures. You she, had, she had spontaneous Follow gestures. me on Twitter at Thilladren. Right there, you can follow all of us on Facebook, Twitter, Gmail, Google Plus, MySpace, and YouTube at ASOTV Podcast. You can follow us at those places for some more podcasts for some of your favorite TV shows, movies, and games. Uh, thank you everyone for watching. Farewell. I swear it's haunted. Pigs everywhere. Uh, no. Skype is just junk. <laughs> Not haunted. Oh, come on. Ha, ha, ha.